Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we are going to wrap up our discussion on stoichiometry. Specifically today, we're going to talk about percent yield. Today's essential question, what does the percent yield of a react reaction measure, and how is it calculated? Um, for today's lecture, you will want both your reference tables and your calculators. All right, let's do this. So percent yield. Percent yield is a measure of the efficiency of a reaction carried out in the laboratory. Um, so re um, experiments, reactions, they're never perfect. You are never, never, never going to get exactly what you were hoping to get. Um, and so what we're measuring is the efficiency. How close are we to what we were really thinking we could get? So theoretical yield. So theoretical yield is, is mm, what products you would make in a perfect world. And we figure out our theoretical yield using stoichiometry calculations. We know the amount of reactant we started with, and we're going to calculate the amount of product we expect to get. This does not take into account any, any error. Okay, so it's like the perfect world. So theoretical yield is in the perfect world. And then we've got actual yield. Actual yield is the amount of product that was actually produced in the laboratory. Um, so in the real world, not the perfect world. So theoretical yield is the perfect world. Everything works out exactly as expected, which never happens. And actual yield is the real world. All right, so now we know what theoretical and actual yields are. What is percent yield? Percent yield is a comparison of the amount of product actually produced with the expected amount. And again, what's actually produced is the real world versus the expected amount, which is the perfect world. It's the theoretical yield. And we calculate that using stoichiometry, okay? And often, the actual yield is less than the expected yield, okay? So we usually make less than we think we're going to make. All right, let's learn how to calculate percent yield. So calculating percent yield. Um, first thing you do is what we've been doing pretty much all unit is calculate the mass of product using stoichiometry. So what we're doing here is we're going to be making a prediction. Okay, per perfect world, right? This is going to be our theoretical, theoretical yield. Well, I'll write yield too. Okay. Um, if you're given the mass of more than one reactant, the first thing you're going to need to do is calculate the limiting reagent first. And then you use the limiting reagent for percent yield calculations. And remember, the limiting reagent is the one that makes the least amount of product. Okay? And then you compare the actual yield with the percent yield using this formula. Percent yield equals theoretical yield. Nope, sorry. Percent yield equals actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. And that's really all there is to it. Um, hopefully you don't find it too bad. Let's try a practice problem. All right, so our practice problem. What is the percent yield if 13.1 grams of calcium oxide is actually produced when 24.8 grams of calcium carbonate is heated? 
All right, so let's start by kind of analyzing this question. It, we've got two numbers there. It almost looks like we are given two knowns, but we really only have one. Um, we know about our reactant here. Um, so what we know is that we have 24.8 grams of CaCO3. Um, we're also given information about one of the products, right? We know um, that 13.1 grams of CaO is actually produced. Actually produced. This is our actual yield. Okay. It's also going to be our unknown because we're going to figure out what we think in theory is going to be produced um, of the product calcium oxide. Okay, so while that's our actual yield, it's also our unknown. Okay, because we're going to compare what, what, we, what should have been produced in the perfect world, our theoretical yield, um, which is our unknown, with the actual yield, what was actually produced. All right, so now let's just do some basic stoichiometry. Start by writing the grid and fill in our known which is 24.8 grams of calcium carbonate over one. So now um, we're at gram CaCO3, which is grams known. Oh, let me identify that as our known right here. Okay, so let's look at our equalities. Which equality starts with grams or mass known? That would be the first one. Molar mass known equals one mole known. So to get the molar mass of calcium carbonate, we'll add up the mass of one calcium, car, sorry, one calcium, one carbon, and three oxygens. And that gave me, hopefully I did this right, 100.09 grams. CaCO3, and that is going to go with one mole CaCO3. And we want to cross out gram CaCO3 on the top here, which means we need to put gram CaCO3 on the bottom and one mole of CaCO3 on the top. All right. Let's cancel out our units. Those do cross out. Check where we're at. We're at mole CaCO3, which is not where we, what we wanted. Um, so we need to keep going. Um, that's mole known. So which equality starts with mole known? Blank mole known equals blank mole unknown from the balanced equation. All right, so. Our known is here, and that is one mole. Our unknown is here, and that is also one mole. So, um, and we want to cross out this mole CaCO3, which means we'll put one mole CaCO3 on the bottom, and one mole CaO on the top. Now let's cross out our units. Mole CaO3 crosses out mole CaCO3. We're at mole CaO. Um, we need mass CaO. So we're gonna have to do another step here. So we're at mole unknown. And the equality that starts with mole unknown this last one here, one mole unknown equals the molar mass of unknown. So our unknown is CaO. So we have one mole CaO equals the molar mass of CaO. So we're going to add up the mass of one calcium and one oxygen, giving us 56.09 grams CaO. 
And we want to cross out mol CAO, which means we want this guy on the bottom. So that one there, this one here, Ooh, that doesn't fit very well. And let's cross out our units. Mol CAO crosses out mol CAO. We're at mass CAO, which is what we were looking for. So now we'll multiply across the top. We'll multiply 24.8 times one times one times 56.09. And that gave me 1390.784 grams CAO. Multiplying across the bottom, one times 100.09 times one times one gives us 100.09. And then when we divide 13.895, grams CAO. All right, so now we've got sig figs. Um, our given has three sig figs. We don't use um, any of the mole stuff. We do look at both of our masses. So we have five there and four there. Um, so three in our final answer, which is gonna give us a yield of 13.9 grams C. And this is our theoretical yield. This is the yield we would get in a perfect world. So now let's go back to our question. Our question asked us, what is the percent yield? Okay, so we're, that means we're gonna compare our theoretical yield to our actual yield which is, they gave it to us right here. That probably wasn't the best color. Hopefully you can see that. That is our actual yield. So, percent yield equals actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100, and that gives us our percentage. So we're going to have percent yield equals 13.9 grams divided by, I forgot what our actual yield was. Here it is, 13.1 grams. Oh, I did that backwards, didn't I? Let's try that again. Sorry. Actual yield equals, what was our actual yield? 13.1 grams, 13.1 grams divided by our theoretical yield, which is this one here, 13.9 grams times 100, giving us 94.2%. So that's actually a pretty good yield. Um, all right. Hopefully that's not too bad. You just need to try to keep straight actual yield versus theoretical yield. So actual yield, again, is what happens actually in the, in the laboratory versus theoretical yield. Theoretical yield is stoichiometry. Okay, so... Theoretical yield is stoichiometry. All right, folks, that's it for today. Have a good one.